this session, so I've started that. Um, but be, so all right now, all attendees are muted. Um, our presenter today will share with us her presentation, and then we'll have it open for questions. And depending on the number, it looks like with the number that we have right now, I'll just move you all to panelists so that you can have an open conversation rather than trying to raise hands and, and do that. Um, but if we get more attendees, then we may change how we do that. Um, and then I'd like to introduce our presenter for today's session. So Shannon, I forgot to ask how to pronounce your last name. So I'm just gonna introduce you as Shannon Cochran is the founder and owner of Coaching Courage, LLC. She is passionate, passionate about inspiring and motivating leaders to embrace their courage as they transition into their best selves. She finds purpose in helping leaders as they experience transition and growth in their chosen fields. She has a diverse background that encompasses being a seasoned member of the United States intelligence community, a former classroom teacher, and an active volunteer with the St. Baldrick's Foundation. She utilizes her personal and professional experiences to coach, mentor, and consult leaders as they transform into their best self through self-reflection, awareness, and presence. Shannon's education includes a Bachelor's of Science in Biology Education and a Master's of Science in Forensic Science. She earned her Project Management Professional PMP certificate certification in 2016 from the Project Management Institute and the executive sort of and in is an executive has an executive certificate in leadership coaching from in 2020 from Georgetown University. Shannon is an International Coaching Federation ICF Associate Certified Coach, ACC. Welcome, Shannon. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's you know, I tell you what, I'm honored, I'm humbled, and I am so incredibly grateful to be here with each of you. Um, in this virtual environment, I tell you, it's a little weird not to be able to look out in the audience and see each of you. Um, hopefully you can see me okay. Uh, you know, let me go ahead and I'm going to share my screen and start with um, the first slide of the presentation. So right now I look at, I look at what's going on with COVID-19 and I realize that, you know, we're at war with COVID-19 and you all are nurses, our healthcare professionals. You're our soldiers, our incredible warriors on the front lines battling the pandemic. You not only show us empathy, kindness, love, support, and care, but you sacrifice time with your own families, your friends, and yourself. When you first became a nurse, you probably never imagined you'd be called to the front lines during the worst pandemic of our life, hopefully our lifetimes, and hopefully we don't see this again. Every single day, you are leading with courage. It takes courage to go into the hospital. It takes courage to go to work. I just, I'm not gonna pretend like I know what you're feeling every day because I don't. Over the next hour and beyond, I hope you feel seen, celebrated, appreciated, supported, and inspired. So thank you so much for having me. It's, it's an absolute honor to be here with each of you. I can't imagine myself being anywhere else right now. So thank you. Here's some of the courageous topics that I would like to, to speak with you about today. So the first is self-care. And your first thought might be, you know what, Shannon, I don't have time for self-care. I'm so busy with my patients. I just don't have time. Hopefully when we cover that topic, you'll see that it, it doesn't take very long. And we'll go into that shortly. Self-compassion. There's so much going on right now, and it's so easy to get caught up in, in our negative self-talk the guilt uh, that comes with um, being so tired that we might make a misstep. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit coming up as well. Gratitude, expressing gratitude every day. Um, seems like something that is, is such a crazy concept right now because things in the world are just, you know, COVID, yes, is one, social injustice. It's an election year. There's just so much going on in the world right now. But 
hopefully again when we get to that i'll help you see how you can how you can express gratitude each day uh, leading with courage we as a people in the united states and beyond we're enveloped in the courage that you express every day your example inspires us and last processing trauma uh, there's a method i read about recently that talks about storytelling uh, to encourage growth um, and it's it's talking about individuals that have have experienced trauma so I hope that that these topics will help you um, at the end of the session to like I said feel seen to feel supported to feel celebrated to feel inspired so with that we'll move into the first topic so self-care I wonder how many of you have heard of the oxygen mask principle. If you haven't heard of it, essentially it basically is you must take care of yourself before you can do anything for anyone else. That sounds really easy, but it's not. It's really, really not, especially in your profession. It's even more difficult. Um, you know, and again, I'm not gonna pretend like I know what it's like to be in your shoes right now, Literally during a pandemic, I cannot even imagine. The only part I can imagine is what it's been like for me. Um, and you know, this is not about me. And so again, in the healthcare profession, it, it's just, there's so many layers to what's going on right now. So, you know, when you, every time you get into on an airplane and you know, the stewardess or uh, men or women get up in the front and they're talking about putting your oxygen mask on uh, first in case you have a child with you. Um, and many of you probably know why that is. If you don't, essentially, if you don't put your mask on first, you could pass out. And then anyone that's with you, a child, if someone else isn't, doesn't have their mask on, is able to take care of them, um, that child could pass out and both of you could, could it could be fatal. So in this respect, um, it's, it's a metaphor for the environment that you're in and not just during the pandemic, but especially during the pandemic right now, putting your oxygen mask on first means taking care of yourself first. And again, I know that's a tough concept right now, especially during the pandemic to even, to even comprehend. Um, you know, if you think about what it means, what self-care means, it's acknowledging your own feelings, the sensations you feel in your body, that's all part of it. Just acknowledging those. It's, it's a natural, I think, human reaction for many of us to go numb during times like this where things get incredibly difficult and overwhelming and we just don't wanna feel anymore because feeling is so incredibly painful. And, you know, trusting your own intuition as well uh, I would say, you know, many people think of, of having a healthy lifestyle, such as eating better, getting more rest, et cetera. Yes, those are helpful for sure. But taking baby steps toward incorporating self-care is vital. It's vital for your health. And that's going to help you um, in the future take better care of your patients, take better care of your family, your friends. But again, most importantly is you, taking care of you. And you know, I can tell you what, what helps me, but what helps me may not help you. And so it's really a matter of you finding what works best for you. And <clears throat> if you have no idea where to start, then try some different things and see what resonates with you. Do an experiment. You may want to try breathing exercises, which I'm going to go through one with you um, here shortly. Meditation, walks in nature, Sitting on a bench, inhaling fresh air. Sitting next to a tree, just in silence, can help ground you. It can help bring you back to the present moment. <clears throat> working out, if you have time to work out, even if it's a, a 5, 10, 15 minute workout, that can help you if that's what you enjoy. Um, you know, and I would, love to, I would love to hear other ideas that come to mind for you. And remember, this is all about you all about you. This is not for anyone else, but it can result, as I said earlier, in an increased capacity to care for others. We need each of you. 
Your family needs you. Your friends need you. Your colleagues need you. And we need you. So we want you to stay healthy. So that's on self-care. And I did attach a resource article that talks about burnout and compassion fatigue and what the signs are for those of you out there that want to share this with your colleagues that maybe teach nursing, uh, nursing courses. Um, there's some, some really good insights in there as well. So self compassion well, I promised a breathing exercise. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So <clears throat> this is called box breathing. And Brene Brown introduced it in one of her books called um, Dare to Lead. And in that, she talks about working with special forces in the military. And so, if you will, I want you to try this with me. So what you're going to do first is your, let me go through the instructions first, and then we'll go through it. So I'm going to ask you to inhale deeply through your nose, and I'm going to count to four for you. Then you're going to hold it for a count of four. Then you're going to exhale slowly, a count of four. We're going to hold that empty breath for a count of four. And then we're going to repeat it a few times. And at the end of this, I would love to hear what you felt after we did this, if it made a difference, if it had an impact on you, what you noticed about yourself as you were doing this particular exercise. So let's go ahead and start. You can close your eyes, leave your eyes open. So take a deep breath in through your nose. One, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale through your mouth, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, repeat, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale through your mouth, two, three, four, Hold, two, three, four. One more time. Inhale through your nose, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale through your mouth, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. So I would love to hear how that felt for you. And again, at the end, if you want to share what you noticed about yourself in that moment, the reason I included this in today's speaking engagement was I wanted you to see how easy it is and how quick it is to calm down your nervous system. And this may not get, I'm not saying it's going to get rid of all your anxiety and all your stress, but hopefully it will help just a little bit. So self-compassion, we have to offer kindness to ourselves first. It's, and again, like self-care, sometimes it's really hard because we get so tired, we get so exhausted, and we start making mistakes, and um, we do things that we wouldn't normally do if we were well-rested, well our minds were filled with the, the healthy fuel that we need, um, we were able to spend the times with the loved one, the amount of time that we really want with our loved ones, all of that takes into account our overall health. And so I have a couple things on the right side of your screen. One, the, the first one, I put that in there. Um, give yourself some grace and recognize that this time in your life isn't forever, it's just a season. And when I read that out loud to myself, I was thinking, man, this is a really, really long season. And so again, I don't want to pretend like, you know, this is just like fall and it's a few months. Um, or in Oklahoma, it could be a week or two. Um, because if we're being honest, sometimes you go from summer to winter. I used to live there. Um, but I want you to recognize that this will pass. Things will get better. They will. And all of us that are not in your profession, and those of us that are in your profession, we're cheering for you. We are cheering for you. Um, <clears throat> you know, 
When the negative self-talk enters your mind, notice it. When it enters and you do notice it, begin to change the dialogue. And I'm not saying it's as easy as saying, okay, you know what? Quit talking to myself like that. That's not helping me. I'm not saying that it's, again, going to be easy. None of this is easy, but it takes practice. And when you do it and you practice it, it does get easier. It really does. It becomes more of a routine for you and you fit it in and you carve out time where you can. And so I want to share this visual with you. And this is related to grief, which again, I kind of relate in, in my own world to self-compassion. So visualize this with me. So visualize the most beautiful beach you've ever seen. Imagine yourself there watching the waves come into the shore. Those waves represent your emotions in this scenario or visualization. You see some small waves and some larger waves. The waves in this example represent our emotions. Some of those emotions we can handle, like the smaller waves. If we're standing uh, about knee deep, those smaller waves don't seem too difficult. When they hit us, they don't knock us down. Occasionally, there's a large wave that just swallows us. When this happens, these waves encompass us, like the emotions that strike without warning. If we let these emotions wash over us like, a, like large waves, we allow ourselves to start feeling, processing, and releasing these emotions. If we do not allow for this, these emotions will eventually come out, but the longer we fight them and numb ourselves, the worse they become. And so I would invite you again at the end to share what you feel and what you noticed about yourself and just visualizing that scenario and if that is helpful to you. And it may be helpful to share with colleagues. It may be helpful to share with some of your patients. And again, I continue to say this. I know this is not easy. I, I don't want to pretend like all of this that I'm presenting to you right now is easy. I know it's not. I know it's not. It is vital to you not allowing yourself to become numb, though. When you become numb, you keep the pain at bay but you also keep the joy and the happiness at bay too. You can't numb one thing without numbing other things as well. And then I, I take you to the bottom right of the screen and invite you to, to say and also to ask yourself and your colleagues, please don't, please do, or say to, like I said, say or ask yourself, please don't be that hard on yourself. You're doing the best you can right now. Let me help you. What would you say to your best friend if he or she was going through this? And finally, how can I help you? So I hope those are, are useful to you, not only to ask yourself or say to yourself, but also to your colleagues and others that you know need support. So gratitude. Again, what I'm grateful for each day may be different than what you're grateful for each day. And so you, as an individual, have to find what works best for you. And I hope by providing a few examples here, uh, start out simple. For example, list what makes you happy right now. List those, list whatever it is. Even if right now you're like, you know what, Shannon, this is, it's, it's too difficult to time. I, I just, I can't think of anything. Keep it simple. If you see a sunrise, you can be grateful for that. If you have a spouse that's been there for you before this pandemic, during this pandemic, and will be there for you after this pandemic, you can be grateful for them. If your children are, are next to you and they come in and they want to give you a big hug and you know be grateful for for that just again the simple 
the simple things are what really, really keeps us grounded and um, can really turn our day around. You know, and, and I would say take one item on your list, even if it's only a list of two right now, try to take one of those and turn it into a daily practice of happiness. Express gratitude for each item on your list, whether it's two items or 20 items or more, express gratitude for each one of those. And the next one I have is list the things that get you out of your head. Man, I mean, in a normal day without a pandemic, I, again, I can't imagine. Right now, list those things that help you get out of your head so that you don't get caught up in that negative talk and you don't get caught up on, oh my gosh, I should have done this and why didn't I do that? And I'm just, I'm so tired. And carve out a few minutes to do one or more of these things that put your mind at ease. And whatever that is for you, whether it be meditation, there's all kinds of resources out there for meditation. Many of them are free, which I'll talk about one of those um, at the end of this as well, that you can leverage as a resource to listen maybe on your drive to work, maybe when you're walking down the hallway from one patient to the next, if you are able to have your, your earbuds in, you may not be able to, but maybe on your drive to work or your drive home from work, maybe you can. Maybe when you go to the restroom, you can. So keep that in mind. And then again, carve out a few minutes to do one or more of these things and express gratitude for each of these items on your list. You know, the, the last one on here, there's so many of them I could have shared with you, but the last one is list of thoughts that fill your mind when you experience stress, worry, and fear. Then tear that page out. Find a safe place, have to add that in there, find a safe place and then burn that piece of paper. Just burn it. <clears throat> Notice what you feel in this moment and see if there's a release and again, I'm not saying this is, this is easy, but see, see what you notice in that moment when you write all of those feelings down, you burn that piece of paper, you watch it burn and just allow all of those negative thoughts and feelings, just do your best to just release them in that moment. So I, again, I, I hope these are helpful. Um, <clears throat> And you know, one thing I want to add to a lot of people think when you're being grateful and you're expressing gratitude, that that means that you have to be happy go lucky all the time. That is absolutely not the case. That is not the case. <clears throat> Rather being grateful is really accepting the entirety of your emotional experience, whatever that may be, whatever it is. And then there's a few other things that, that you can try. I'm happy to provide these two if you would like at the end of this. One is, tell someone you love three things you appreciate most about them. That's another form of showing gratitude. And then you can close your eyes, take a deep breath and think about the following. One thing you appreciate about yourself. One thing you appreciate about a loved one. One thing you appreciate about, a, appreciate about someone you don't know very well. And then finally, Think about one person, including yourself, who has showed up to support you through a difficult experience during the pandemic and tell them how much it means to you. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's not about how consistently you write in your gratitude journal or about how many minutes you meditate on gratitude each morning. It's about noticing those little moments those little moments. It's about appreciating the people around you. It's about remembering the power of two simple words. Thank you. You know, when I titled this presentation, I was thinking about each one of you and how it takes immense courage right now. And even when it's not during the, a pandemic, it takes immense courage to walk into a hospital not knowing what you're going to face. And right now, as I said in the beginning, you all are our warriors. You're on the front lines. And we want to support you in any way we can because we want to make things better for you. 
however that however that may be and so you know as i was doing some research on just courage in general many people think about the courage to act and yes that is true that is part of courage but what underlies the courage to act and that's really the courage to feel think back to that visualization about those emotions coming in and the courage to feel is also known as emotional courage. And that's really, that's really tough. You know, one thing I would invite you to think about as you think about leading with courage is I'm going to ask you this question. How will the future look if we take the view of someone standing in the present and imagine a future without the attachment to the past. You might be wondering, what does that mean exactly? That means basically letting our imaginations and curiosities run wild. What if we stop, stop trying to go back to normal and we create a, a new new, is what I've, I like to call uh, whatever this is that we're creating right now, it's, it's as if we have a blank canvas and we're using our imagination to make things better, to make things more efficient, to uh, be innovative and creative and lean into what is working right now. And this is an opportunity to get rid of some of those things that aren't working. And also in the nursing field, the healthcare field in general, all of you have been just instrumental and so innovative in what you've been able to create during this time for your patients because you care so deeply and you're so empathic. And again, cannot tell you how much we appreciate you and how much you inspire each of us every single day. And you may not feel that right now because you might say, you know what, Shannon? I'm not a hero. Well, you may feel that way, but regardless of what your role is in, in healthcare, you're heroes to us. And so just lean into that and know that we love you, we support you, we celebrate you. We hear you, man, we see you. We really see you. You know, and as I'm talking about that, think about how nursing can be reimagined. Again, like I said, let your imagination and let your curiosity run wild. And that, you may not have the capacity for that right now. If you do have a moment, even a few seconds, you come up with a great idea. If you have an opportunity, write it down. And that might be something that we can visit later. And I say we, all of us as a, as a human race can visit that later and incorporate those ideas. Maybe there's an opportunity to incorporate those, incorporate the, those right now as well. <clears throat> so again, if you had a blank canvas and you could shift the future of nursing for generations that follow you, what comes up for you as you contemplate this idea? You know, the hard part about this is it means that we must let go of what's familiar and release our attachments to our ideas of right and wrong. And again, not easy for us as individuals, much less a society. It, it's just, it's, it's tough for us to think about letting go of something that's familiar. That's why so many people go back to what they feel is, is normal, their routines, because it's tough to think about letting go of some of those attachments to the past. And so if we get comfortable with the unknown, in the chaos and the uncertainty, because that's what's here right now. A new future will be created out of this. And if we really listen, I mean really, really listen to what comes up for us, the vision for what we want to create, it will emerge. I want to say too that you, each of you, are some of the most courageous people I have ever known. You're rising to the occasion. You're showing your courage to act every single day. You allowed yourself to feel, which again displays your emotional courage. 
man, it's tough to feel. It's tough to allow those patients that you love and you care about that are struggling right now. And even in, in other times when you have a patient that's struggling that's not dealing with COVID, it's tough because you care so deeply about your patients. Don't let the pandemic allow you to, to question your purpose or your confidence. Connection with your colleagues, your family, your friends, strangers, that's what's gonna really feed your soul. And that's what you need, in my opinion, when you're running on empty. And I ask, how can we, how can all of us be of service to you? You've already done so much for us. How can we be of service to you? You know, there's, there's a lot of things out there right now um, that are probably uh, being presented to you about ways to process what you're seeing, what you're dealing with, what you're feeling, the trauma that you've experienced yourself. And there's an article that I read, um, an exercise to help your team overcome the trauma of the pandemic. And I really wanted to share this with you. I thought it might be useful. Again, it's not something that is gonna fix everything. Um, so I don't want you to think that I, I think that. I do hope that it helps though. Um, you know, during the pandemic, we all are facing a loss of routines, loss of identities, and a loss of financial security. All of this is, is compounded with the uncertainty of how long the pandemic and stress on our lives and our healthcare systems will last. And the ways that we cope with this trauma will define every aspect of our personal and our professional lives. With nurses experiencing so much trauma around the world, not just in the US, not just in Oklahoma, but around the world, this is not going to be the, the really the question becomes here. How do we brave a changing working environment in that particular situation? You know, one way, according to psychologists, is through storytelling and story listening, and that will activate post traumatic growth. What does that mean exactly? <clears throat> post traumatic growth has been defined as the transformative positive change that can occur as a result of struggle with great adversity. That's what that means. So as you look at each of these questions, you can consider what is the greatest loss that you've experienced during COVID-19? And it may be different for each one of you. There, there's not one correct answer. And then the second one, what is the greatest gain you experienced during COVID-19? And third, what are you learning about yourself during COVID-19? Four, what would it look like if you applied your learnings going forward? And finally, what two words or short phrases will remind you of how to apply what you're learning? And the article that I sourced down at the bottom of the slide actually has an exercise that you can go through. You can share with your colleagues. Um, those of you out there that are, that are educators of nurses, um, you don't have to be an educator to use this, but if you are, this is something you can alter and incorporate in a way that makes the most sense for you in your particular environment. Research shows that when we make meaning out of trauma, we have an increased sense of our own strength and capacity to prevail. Our relationships with others improve and we feel a greater sense of belonging. We have a greater sense of compassion and an increased sense of purpose and appreciation of life. And like I said before, we need all of you to be as healthy as possible right now because we need you. Each of you is gonna have pandemic related, self-defining stories that you're creating about work during COVID-19. When you story yourself in new ways, these new stories encourage growth by helping you acknowledge the grief 
and the loss caused by adversity and analyze its effect and meaning and internalize a positive resolution that activates self-transformation. And I know it sounds like, you know, again, you might be thinking, Shannon, come on. You want me to just tell a story and, and all this pain and, and the things that I've been feeling are just going to go away? And my answer to you is absolutely not. This is only a starting point. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a therapist. But I'm hoping that this can at least help get you on, the, on a path that's going to help you to heal. Because again, we need you. And so as I said, we see you, we celebrate you, we support you, and we absolutely thank you so very much for all that you're doing for each of us. And I have a video that um, I want you to watch. I see you, I appreciate you, and I thank you. Hello nurses. Thank you so much for choosing a profession that is so profound, so impactful for families, communities, and frankly, the health of the world. Your profession makes such a big difference. And although I may never meet you because I live in Virginia, I know that in my lifetime, I no doubt will meet people whose lives you've changed and changed for the better. There is an Irish proverb that says, it is in the shelter of each other that people live. And it's because of people like you who chose nursing and the health professions that we can live those lives as, as fully and as happily as possible. So thank you again. Hi everyone, this is Zay Smith, I'm in Denver. I work for the Department of Justice and obviously we are in a position to see all of the wonderful benefits um, of having nurses in our lives. I am the daughter, the daughter-in-law, the best friend, the niece and the aunt of a nurse. And in that position, I definitely see the caring and warm and amazing people that you are. And we can't help but thank you for all that you do. Keep up the good work. We really depend on you and we definitely appreciate your hard work. Thanks. Hi everybody. This is Marnie in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I just wanted to give a quick shout out tonight to all the nurses here in our state to let them know that we see you, we hear you, and we most definitely support you. Whether you realize it or not, we love and appreciate you each and every day for your compassion and your willingness to put the lives of your patients, their families, as well as your own families ahead of your own, especially during this time of uncertainty of COVID-19. I have a special connection. I want to say thank you to a nurse here in Oklahoma, my youngest daughter, who is an ER nurse in McAllister, Oklahoma. Jen, we love you. We support you, we appreciate you. We are so proud of you for everything that you're doing for your patients and your own family. You rock. Nurses, thank you so much for your knowledge, your skill sets, your empathy, your patience, your flexibility, your creativity, your stamina, your resilience. You bring so much to the healthcare industry and I am so grateful to all of you for all of the work that you put in and my heart is just full of gratitude for everything you offer to the people that you care for and their families. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Kevin Sims and I currently live in the state of Alabama, but I work for a national cancer nonprofit. And let me tell you, we see the work that nurses do for our patients every single day. And it's not just the patients that you have a huge impact on, it's the caregivers as well. So thank you. Hi, this is Kim and Wendy out of Denver, Colorado yet I'm still an Okie at heart. Wendy and I are both United States Marshals. We spent 30 and 26 years respectively uh, in service for the Marshal Service. So we understand everything that you guys have given in 2020. This has been the most trying year for first responders and for people helping out society. So I truly, truly wanna say thank you for all that you have done this year. Thank you so much for your, your endless energy 
for giving yourself so selflessly uh, and really for making our world a better place. We uh, just love all of you and thank you for giving the best care to your patients, um, many who are friends and family, and we just couldn't be more honored to be telling you that. Thank you. Thank you. Our love. Yep. Stay strong. All right, if, if you all can see this, I'm, I'm now on the resources slide. And uh, before I move on to this, I would like to say I hope that you enjoyed the video because again, it was so important when I was invited to uh, provide this uh, speaking engagement for you. Um, I really wanted you to know how much we sincerely appreciate all that you do for us every single day. And so I wanted to make something that was special, that was um, attached to Oklahoma. And many of the people you saw on that video uh, have ties to Oklahoma. They're either from there, uh, they're still there, they moved on to other states, but still have you in their hearts. And I spent half my life in Oklahoma as well. So I'm just, again, honored to be here with you. So one thing, I wanted to let you know about is there's a pro bono offer uh, through the Leadership Support Network that um, Georgetown put together as well as the alumni at Georgetown that graduated from different programs within the Institute for Transformational Leadership. The offer is three hours of free coaching, facilitation, or consultants or consulting offered to frontline workers. I will make sure that Jane has a one page PDF on this offer. Um, this is again a collaboration with Georgetown University and the Inf Institute for Transformational Leadership Network. Um, three hours, absolutely free. So if that's something that you, you can benefit from, uh, don't think that it has to be one hour at a time or it has to be three hours at a time, it doesn't. If you only have time for five minutes or 15 minutes or 30 minutes, we will accommodate your schedule because this is for you. We want to make sure that we can help you and we want to make sure that you know about this offer. And so I will, there is a link in the slides to the network if you would like to explore it a little further. Um, some of the content I provided you today um, are two, three, and four. So those articles, if you want to read them in full, um, I wanted to make sure that you had a link there as well. Uh, number five, there's a guide. 10% uh, Happier is a, it's an app. It's also a website that they created a coronavirus sanity guide. There's podcasts, there's meditations, there's articles, there's all kinds of, of information on there in ways that help with coping with stress, fear, and anxiety. And I have to tell you that for any of you in the nursing profession, they have, um, there's a, when you go to this link, there's a link that you can click on and right now it's being offered for free to to you all in in the healthcare industry as well as some other industries that are on the front line so i just wanted you to know about that as well again it's free um, there's a couple of songs and videos that um, i hope resonate with you the lyrics in particular i thought uh, might you might find some comfort right now so i wanted to include courage by orianthi featuring lacy of flyleaf and you will be found. It's from Dear Evan Hansen on Broadway, um, another beautiful song. And uh, again, the lyrics are just, they gave me chills. Um, 
There's a podcast by David Kessler and Brene Brown on grief and finding meaning. Um, there's a PDF printout on Daring Greatly Leadership Manifesto. Uh, again, I look at you all as you're all leaders, whether you have a staff or whether you're influencing your leaders. There's a TEDx Houston talk by Brene Brown on the power of vulnerability. And uh, again, so those are the 10 resources that I wanted to share with you before we go into uh, questions. Here's my contact information. Feel free to reach out if I can help in any way, please let me know. Um, Jane also knows how to reach me uh, directly, but here's the information. And, um, and with that, I'm ready for some questions. So thank you again so much. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you, Shannon. This was great. Thank you very much. What I think I'm going to do with the rest of the, the attendees is I'm going to move them to panelists so we can, one, you can see them as they're asking questions um, and that we can have, since there's um, a, just a small group, but that way we can have a probably a more cohesive conversation than, than the other way. So I, if you'll give me a moment, I'm going to move you all to so that you can open your mics, share your um, screen so we can see your lovely faces. And have a, a good conversation. So you're all panelists, you all have, op you can all open your own mics, I think. Um, you need help, let me know. I'm watching both the chat box and the um, Q&A, so whichever box that you wanna post in, we can move from there. Anybody have any questions, comments? You all are too quiet. There's a message in the chat. Leslie Collins says, thank you for your presentation and for all the resources. It was great. Thank you. I want to second that. And Jane, will this slide deck be available to us for reference? Uh, sure. So Shannon, can is there a way that you can upload it to the chat or so Let me they, see. They can all get it. And then I think since we have this recorded, I'm going to see if we can't post this on the website so other people can participate in it. Um, and then also, um, I'll share the slide deck in our, um, probably on our COVID resources and in our next e-newsletter along with the Georgetown pro bono offer. Yes, I'm fine with sharing it um, with all of you. And there is a link to the video. Um, let me see which slide it's on. I want to make sure I give you the right one. I also know some of the, off the top of my head, I, I have met some of these people in my email box, so it'd be really easy to send an email to. Um, so, and or look. Okay, no, that sounds good. So the, the slide that you all saw that says, we see you, we celebrate you, we support you, thank you. There's a blue circle off to the right, the right hand corner. If you click on that, where it says leading with courage, that will take you to YouTube, which is where the video is uh, located. And that's a um, higher definition video, which it was hard to, when we played it, so I did a test run last night, and when I played it last night, the lips, the sound and the lips were not matching up. And so we had to, we had to make some technical alterations <laughs> to make sure that you all, uh, the lips would be matching as you saw it. So the video is out there on YouTube, uh, very easy to get to. It is unlisted since this was for you all. So um, I didn't have permission to share it beyond. So I wanted to make sure that it was out there though for each of you. So once this uh, completes, you all are, are welcome to view that as many times as you would like. Let 
You're very welcome, Leslie. Um, and Shelly, thank you um, to both of you. I'm, I'm so glad that you all find these resources helpful. I'm not a nurse. I haven't been a nurse. So I was guessing and um, hoping that I was that I was hitting the mark with what you all might find useful. So thank you so much for your feedback. I appreciate it. So looking at some of these names, I don't, I'm not so sure I know who um, C, C. Pete Law is or um, T-R-H-E-M-B-R-1. So if you want to share with us who you are, I, I probably can find your email address or um, get this to you. Again, you all have the ability to unmute yourself um, and ask questions. This is, this is the part that's supposed to be interactive. I promise I won't bite you. <laughs> and you're welcome to ask me any questions that you can think of. Um, today, I was not talking much about coaching because that's this was about leadership and about courage and really about each of you. Um, so if you have any questions at all, I mean, again, feel free to ask. I'd also add that if you want to share things that you're experiencing and um, just, just to put them out on whether you want um, assistance in in how to solve an issue or just want to share what you're dealing with we're here that's what this is for this is your time to share your thoughts share your ideas and i just saw what charlotte posted and absolutely uh, it reminds you, she said, um, this reminds you to step back and breathe before you become overwhelmed with or to help slow down the overwhelming feeling, feelings of this pandemic. Um, and absolutely. You know, one example I meant to use uh, during the presentation, which um, slipped my mind in the moment, was even if you don't feel like you have time to do a breathing exercise, if you want to stop while you're not stop, but while you're washing your hands in between uh, one patient that you're leaving and another patient you're about to uh, go check on, you can absolutely do that breathing exercise that we did. You can do one of your choosing um, at that time uh, when you go use the restroom. I know some of you may not be using the restroom your entire shift uh, because of all the PPE that you have to wear right now. If you do use the restroom, that's another great time. You can lean up against the restroom wall. You can do the breathing exercise when you're, for lack of a better, better way of putting it, when you're sitting on the toilet. <laughs> so um, if that's the only time you have, take those moments and make them yours and use them to your advantage. So Jane, do you have any questions? Well, I, I, I don't, but I was, um, I guess my big question is, is this the kind of um, sessions that you wanna see in networks of support? Do you wanna see some other kinds of things? What, what all can we, we've got a, a list sort of running through the end of December. So in October, we'll do a session on advocacy that Vicki White Rankin, our contract lobbyist is going to run. Um, in November, uh, Tina Stewart, who is the ONA Emerging Nurse Director, which is that group for five years and less into the profession, is going to talk about new to the profession. Um, we're hoping to garner nurses that are new to the profession, but we sure would love to have those of you who have more experience than five years to be able to be there to help mentor. Um, and then in December, our session is led by Carol Robinson, and it's, it's on um, Stop the Bleed. More, somewhat about her experiences, if you know Carol, 
and the work that she has done, you know, that and know who she is. She suffered a stroke and has had um, very good recovery and is going to share her lessons learned and how she's moved forward from that. So we've got a whole, you know, if you think we need to do, we've, we're rotating this fall so that we do different times, different days. But if you think we need to do a set time, love to know that as well. Um, we're trying to make sure that we catch everybody, um, knowing that everybody has different shifts and different time frames. I'm gonna say it again, you guys, you're all too quiet. As I was watching that video there at the end of the presentation, all I could think about, Jane, was how everybody who's going to be at convention needs to see that video. Is, would there be a way that that could happen? If Shannon would grant us permission, I sure would, would love to share that. Um, I, I will we'll work through that, but I think yeah, I think there there is some time that we can run that and that would we'd be honored to to do that. That's a great idea. Thank you, Shelley. And I would I would love to have you guys show it um, at the convention. What I may try to do before then is to maybe get a higher quality quality video at the end. Um, I know that was a little blurry and on a big screen it may be a little bit more blurry. If you guys are okay with the way it looks right now, I'm perfectly fine with that. Our, our production company may be able to run it at a higher quality video. Okay. I'll just have to share it with them and see what they can do. And okay. It may take us working back and forth a little bit, but we yeah. can. Well, and let me know. Yeah, let me know. Um, and I'll also uh, reach out to the people that were part of the video as well. And uh, I don't think that they would have an issue at all. Uh, with you all using it because they were more than thrilled to be invited to participate um, and it was specifically I let them know it was going to be a group of Oklahoma nurses and they were just so honored to be part of it uh, to show you all how much they care. Great well we will work on that that's a great suggestion which I would be remiss if I didn't say that the ONA convention is planned for October 1st. It, um, it is a virtual conference. There is a live and a recorded um, portion of it. Um, how, most of the, the live, I think the general session with Tina Brown is a live presentation, although all of the breakouts are going to be pre-recorded those presenters will be available live to answer questions um, and so they will be on and that will only happen on October 1st but if you can't participate in everything on October 1st then we will have that as an enduring presentation um, through, uh, through the end of December which also means that if you're looking for um, CNUs you will have the opportunity to, to um, participate in all 13 hours of the CNUs and activity hours and or contact hours. And that also means that you don't have to pick one presenter over another if you have a breakout that has two people, you know, two people that you want to hear or two sessions that you want to hear. You can participate in both. One would just be live and one would not be. Memrix, as, I use, uh, as I've been saying, but uh, there is a group of our colleagues that do not know what Memrix means. Or live, that whole concept of live versus Memrix. If you remember the um, video tape record, or this, I think it was a cassette um, tape company. If you want to, are interested in registering for the convention, you can go to our website, nurse, uh, which is 
oklahomanurses.org and click on events, annual events on the bottom. So I think that we've run to three to 1130. Um,